Hi, welcome to Cell Atomic, and today's topic is about kinetic particle theory. There are three states of matter that we can normally observe, and they are solid, liquid, and gas. So these three states have their own unique properties. We define the states based on whether they have a fixed shape, a fixed volume, and whether they are compressible. So let's look at the table below. From the table, we can see that solid has a fixed shape, a fixed volume, but it's not compressible. Liquid has no fixed shape, has a fixed volume, and it's not compressible. Lastly, we have gas. Gas has no fixed shape, no fixed volume, but it is compressible. So, why is this so? Let's first look at solid. So, let's assume that each of these red circles are your solid particles. We can see that the particles are packed closely together and in an orderly fashion. So this results in the solid being rigid and having a fixed shape and volume. Moreover, since the particles are packed closely together, there is no space and hence it's not compressible. Also note that solid particles have a low kinetic energy and they vibrate in their fixed position. So this is the kinetic particle and they vibrate like that in their fixed position. So you may ask what's kinetic energy? So kinetic energy is actually the energy an object has due to its motion. So the faster it moves, the higher the kinetic energy. Next, let's look at liquid. So for the liquid particles, they are all in a disorder manner and they slip over one another. So the disorder arrangement results in liquid having no fixed shape. That is why when we pour water into any container, the water actually takes the shape of the container. Since the particles are relatively close to one another due to the relatively strong attractive forces, there is no space for it to move and hence they are not compressible and have a fixed volume. Liquid particles also have a low kinetic energy, but they are slightly higher than solid particles. Why? Because since they can slide over one another and not vibrate, the higher the particles move, the higher the kinetic energy. Last but not least, let's look at gas. So gas particles have high kinetic energy. They move around at high speeds. The gas particles have weak attractive forces. So that's why the particles are all so far apart. That's why they're all so far apart. And due to them being far apart, there are gaps in between the particles. And thus, that's why they can be compressed. And this is also the reason why gas particles do not have a fixed shape and volume. Now, let's move on to the change in state. So, there are, there are some changes in state, such as melting, boiling, evaporation, sublimation, condensation, and freezing. These change in states are actually due to a change in energy. So, let's look at the temperature time diagram. As the temperature increases, let's use red arrow to show the increase. The particles move from a solid to a liquid, which is melting, and then from a liquid to a gas, which is vaporizing. As the temperature decreases, let's use the blue arrow, as they decrease, the opposite happens. So gas turns to liquid, which is known as condensing, and then from liquid to solid, and this is known as freezing. So we can see that this at these two points, here and here, there are actually a mixture of two states. At the melting point, we can see that 
either melting or freezing is taking place depending on the situation. So if it's an increase in temperature, it's melting. And if it's a decrease in temperature, it's freezing. And at the boiling point, vaporizing and condensing is taking place, also depending on the situation. However, for some objects such as carbon dioxide, CO2, they do not have a liquid state. So instead, the solid, also known as dry ice, sublimates from solid to gas immediately. And this entire process is known as sublimation. So you'll be wondering how the particles actually change from a solid to a liquid. Let's use melting as an example. So we know melting is a change from a solid state to a liquid state. For melting, as you add in more heat, so let's use red arrows again for heat, as we add in more heat into the solid particle, for example, this is um, ice, as the temperature increases, the kinetic particle of the energy also increases. So for example, at first, the particles just vibrate slowly. But as you add in more heat, they start to vibrate more and more. After some time, the temperature reaches the melting point and the particles will have gained enough energy to overcome the attractive forces between them. So between the particles, the attractive forces. But once they reach the melting point, they have gained enough energy to overcome these attractive forces. So the solid particles, which are originally packed closely and in orderly fashion, start to overcome these attractive forces and begin to slide over one another. And that's when the state has changed from a solid state to a liquid state. When encountering problems like this and ask, when asked to explain, we can use these four steps to explain how the substance has changed from one state to another. So first, we have to look at the temperature. Is it an increase in temperature? Has heat been added? Or has heat been taken away? So what's the change in temperature? An increase or a decrease? Next, we need to state how the change in temperature affects the kinetic energy. So if heat is added in, the kinetic energy increases. But if heat is taken out, it loses energy instead. And then thirdly, we state the change in the properties of the particle. So for a solid state, it's packed closely together in an orderly fashion, but after that it changes to a liquid, which is a disorderly fashion, but the particles slide over one another, or from a liquid, which is a disorderly manner, to a gas where all the particles are all far apart. And then lastly, we state the change in state. So whether was it a solid, to liquid change or was it a liquid to solid change or was it a liquid to gas change or a gas to liquid change so answer accordingly to the question so you can try these particular steps for a uh, change in state such as a uh, freezing or boiling so there are also times where the question will ask you to determine the state that substance is substance is in. So they will give you the melting point of the substance, they will give you the boiling point of the substance, and then they will give you the temperature that the substance is in. So if, for example, in this case, compound X has a melting point of negative 35 degrees and a boiling point of negative 10 degrees. So the first thing you do is actually draw a number line, and then after that you write the information that is given. So we know that the melting point is negative 35, so we put negative 35 here, and we know that the boiling point is negative 10. So we put negative 10 here. So we know for a number line, the values would increase towards the right. So 
anything towards the right, the value is higher than the values on the on the left hand side of the number line. So for any temperature that it's more than negative 10, the region in red, they're in the gas state. Why? Because the temperature in this region is higher than the boiling point. Similarly, anything on the left of negative 35, it will be in the solid state. Why is this so? Because anything on the left of negative 35 is colder than the melting point. So anything colder than the melting point means that it's, it will be in a solid state. So in the center, in this region between negative 35 to negative 10, we are left with the liquid state. So for example, if the question were to ask you to determine the state of the substance if it's at zero degrees Celsius, let's start with zero. So we know zero is a larger number than negative 10. So it's somewhere around here, zero. So for zero, it will be a guess. Compound X will be a guess. Let's say the next question they ask you to find it in um, negative 20. So we know negative 20 lies between negative 35 and negative 10, around here, negative 20. So in this case, compound X will be a liquid. And last but not least, let's say if compound X was in a region of uh, negative 50 degrees Celsius. So negative 50 degrees Celsius, it's lower than negative 35. So let's say negative 50 is around here. So in this case, compound X will be a solid. So by using this method, this temperature line, we'll be able to determine the state that a compound or substance is in when they give us the melting point and the boiling point as a reference. So lastly, we'll look at diffusion and the factors that affect diffusion. So we know that diffusion is the movement of particles of a substance from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So this happens in liquid and gas as the molecules in liquid and gas can move around randomly and are not fixed. For gas, they move around in, at high speeds and for liquid, they slide over one another. Solid on the other hand, they are all fixed in their position and only vibrate so they can't really move around. So we see that in the diagram, we see that uh, there is a region of high concentration of red particles and a high concentration of blue particles. So they will start to move around randomly, like randomly, like move around like that in all areas until they reach a state of equilibrium. At equilibrium, we can see that the particles are spaced out evenly in all regions. So there are two factors of diffusion, molecular mass and temperature. So how does molecular mass affect diffusion? So the higher the molecular mass, the heavier the molecule. So we can see that the yellow and red molecule here is much bigger than the two green molecules here. So we can say that the molecular mass of this is higher than the green ones. So this is small, small, small. So a heavier molecule will not be able to move faster than a lighter molecule. So it will take a longer time for it to reach equilibrium. And temperature also affects diffusion. So remember earlier when we said that as temperature increases, the molecules have more energy. This also affects diffusion. So when the temperature increase, same, we're going to use red arrow again. As temperature increase in the heat, the molecules can move around faster. So they start moving around faster. They move even more vigorously around faster. 
So now since the molecules can move faster, they will be able to reach a state of equilibrium quickly. Bye!